Okay, calling to order the examining board of plumbers meeting on today, June 10th, is it? Yes, it is. June 10th, 2024. First order of business, review the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, we did not have a meeting um, last week. Is that the third? Well, we yeah. had a meeting to the extent that some of us were here. We, yeah, we didn't right. actually conduct any business. So we, we postponed that uh, meeting until today's date. And thank you all for appearing. Uh, prior to that, we did have a meeting um, back in April. Was that the last meeting we had? We didn't have one in May? Uh, we did have a meeting. Yeah, I thought we had a meeting in May. Sixth. I had, I had oh, okay. minutes for that. We don't have any minutes? You do, you, yeah, this you is the minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So we, we gave everybody a copy of the 310 City of Binghamton Plumbing Codes and Ordinances for y'all to review. Um, this is, uh, you know, explain the conditions of using plumbers, penalties for unlicensed, unpermitted work, um, and had you guys take a look at that so that we could respond to some letters that we got, namely one from HHK that says that it is requesting that the board and the inspector perform their duties and uh, fulfill their duties and enforce the code. So we gave you all a copy of the code. So fast forward, we had some hearsay about work being done uh, in, in conflicts with the code, although no details were given. We couldn't really respond to that. We did have two occasions where we found that work was done without a permit. And then those two properties, we issued stop work orders to the building owner and said, you have to have a licensed plumber and your plumber has to get a permit. And my question to you guys after reading the code was, do you feel like we did fulfill our duties as the Board of Plumbing Examiners by giving the homeowner or building owner a stop work order. The question was, should we also have notified the, the plumber that they were in violation of not getting a permit? We actually don't have that uh, that code here. That's in chapter 200, 200 INA says, whenever you do plumbing work, alterations, renovations, improvements, you have to get a permit. So uh, the question then was, uh, do we, just issue a stop work order to the building owner and, and hope that they convey that information to their plumber, or do we also notify the plumber? It's as we see fit. There was no direction or advice coming down from Corporation Council as to what we should do. Their response was the board should do what the board feels is prudent. And if you want to run it past us just to make sure it's okay, we can do that, but we can't direct you. We have to we have to leave it up to the board to determine whether or not they felt like they fulfilled their duties and enforced the code. Anybody have any opinion as to whether or not additional notices of violation should be delivered to anyone other than the building owner or home? Who else would we deliver them to? The, the plumbing company who did the work. What's been the precedent? Okay, so how, how many entities do we have? Mm -hmm. We don't find the plumber. Mm -hmm. I want to determine the number of entities that we notify. We haven't yet. We have only notified two property owners that they are prohibited from continuing with any work until they get right permits. But my point is, is that. It, given the little bit of confusion that's out here, want to notify both the plumber and the employer, and that way there's no argument that oh gee we didn't know about this, et cetera. Right. Yeah. One additional postage stamp, you know. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that too. I, I you know, the homeowner, if it's just, I mean, not just a homeowner, but homeowner pays taxes in the city, but they might not be aware. That they're in, you know, not, not in violation when the plumber probably knows. Right, right. Well, both parties may 
not know? And is it our obligation to inform them and say, well, before we get to the point of being punitive and issuing appearance tickets or imposing fines, yeah, should we at way, least give you a chance to understand what the code is? That's the way to go. And, and they can uh, cure the problem. Correct? Absolutely. Okay. So we do have the name of the, the plumbing company. We could send them a uh, notice of violation. And, and honestly, we can't say that they, um, you know, did anything other than got uh, got, to, got to work without getting a permit first. And we could say, hey, FYI, if you're going to be working, you're going to need permits. Let me just back up for a second because I, this is confusing to me. When a person or a corporation comes to get the permit, don't they have to lay out on the application who their plumber is and the permit that they're going to obtain? Isn't yeah. That... So this isn't a case of somebody um, applied for a plumbing permit and, and we just hadn't issued it yet. This is a case where they didn't even ask. They, okay. didn't, they didn't even come into the office to get a permit. Did they have a building permit? No. Not no. even a building. No, they are just doing some plumbing at, on both oh. occasions. They just wanted to do one trade plumbing work right but they're supposed to have gotten an appropriate permit yeah yeah and now okay. we now we notified the building owners and said in case you didn't know when you do what you consider maybe a little repair or a tiny alteration me you may not have thought you needed one we're here to tell you now we gave it to them in writing you do and then if they fail to comply with that then you yeah. can uh yeah revoke uh, whatever permits they have well, correct if they fail to comply with that, then they would be in violation of a stop work order, and that would be a ticketable offense. Okay. Well, you you issued the stop work order afterwards. We issued the stop the stop work order is a placard that gets posted on the building, and it's also okay. written notice of violation telling the homeowner or building owner you need permits for this type of work. All right. So they can't claim ignorance. What we're saying now is the plumbing company should also be given a notice that says work work in your trade requires permits. You'd be better off coming into our office and applying for one and having us give you a written response that said what you're doing doesn't need one rather than just assume that. So if we give them notice, then at least it's I out of the book. I don't know what more you could do yeah. or ask us to do. It. I agree. Okay. <laughs> so, Fred, are you making a motion to send a notice of violation? It's not It's not a finding of fault or guilt or anything. It's just a written notice. However that, you want to word it, I would uh, that we uh, Are you making a motion? Proposal. Yeah, I'll second it. Yeah, John seconds. Okay. John seconds. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Okay. Next, um, we have. <clears throat> if you look at your, if you look at your plumbing code and we go all the way up to uh three ten dash eleven we're looking at cancellation of license notice and hearing and this says that if we're interested in in canceling someone's license for a violation of the rules and regulations of the plumbing code um we would have to have a hearing and we would have that have to give the individual uh, not less than 10 days notice stating the grounds of the complaint right what what we had in, encountered last week was a, a job site where a permit had been issued the plumber was licensed but the plumber didn't perform the work and if we look at the very first page of this on 310-1, it says, when used in this article, the words employing or master plumber shall mean the person having a place of business who by himself or the journeyman plumbers that he employs performs the actual work. And so what we have here is some a plumbing permit that was issued, some plumbing work was done, but not by the master plumber himself and not by people that they employ. So we have a violation of the code and we had tried to evaluate the severity of it and, and which um, 
you know, penalty would be most prudent. And I think when we get to 310-11, it says, look, even when somebody is in violation of the code, you can't go straight to canceling the license without giving this person notice and written uh, notice and, and a hearing. Um, so we had gathered here today thinking that we would have a hearing, uh, but instead I think we're, we're looking at the other side of that, which says we also have to give this person not less than 10 days notice. Who are we talking about? What's the person? I'm sorry, Fred, I got ahead of myself. Um, who we have here with us today is Mr. Pete Beard, Excelsior Plumbing, uh, had, okay. uh, had uh, obtained a license to do some work at 94 Walnut Street, and then in the end, uh, we found out he had not done the work, nor nor were the people who did it in his employee. Okay. The reason why I think it's safe to assume that is because Mr. Beard, on two occasions, submitted to us uh, a certificate of workers' compensation exemption, which is only available to people who don't have employees. So, although the two gentlemen performing the work may have been acquaintances or been known to Mr. Beard as, you know, people who are going to be doing the work that were not his employees. Otherwise, he would have had workers' compensation and disability insurance. So uh, whether the homeowner paid these people directly and Mr. Beard just got the license or Mr. Beard collected money from the homeowner and paid them isn't really the case. The point is that we had, uh, he had pulled a permit, but didn't do the work nor was it done by journeyman plumbers and his employee. How do, how do we know that? Because uh, we were witness to the actual work taking place and um, questions about the quality of the work could not be answered by the individual who pulled the permit. Uh, and I think he made it clear that he couldn't answer that because he didn't really do the work. So, uh, we have Mr. Beard with us here today who, who may want to refute anything that I've said or add explanation or, or otherwise. Um, and we can we can open up the, the table to Mr. Beard if you had any comments, commentary, or questions to us. I had already obligated myself to people. You didn't, you know, all the time you can make deal with some of the stuff in case afterwards. Even though what would have been better if I did. Yeah. I do know better about you. Okay. So, uh, you know, first time. I, spent... I realized it at the time, but yeah. yeah, it didn't take too long before I figured out this was a big mistake. Okay. And I, and I don't know if this has happened in other locations, Mr. Beard, but I will say that um, I, me. I, I would, based on what the code says and what we know about the, the case, um, I would make a motion to, to issue a written notice of violation so that we've at least covered this uh, prior notice of not less than 10 days stating the ground of the complaint and the, the, the code in which you're in violation of. Um, but I got to be honest, I think that, uh, in my opinion, if it were to happen a second time, we would say we already had your notice issued, we would be having a hearing, there would be a good likeliness that if your license wasn't revoked, it would be suspended for probably no less than one year. Okay. I don't know if anybody else believes, uh, you know, that that would be a prudent move or if they think there should be something more severe in, in place right now. I'm not clear on what the options are. Well, the options to us, Fred, according to 31011, is we have to give Mr. Beard 10 days, not less than 10 days notice that he is in violation of the plumbing code. And, 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 and then if we aren't satisfied with the response that we get from that, then we could have a hearing about- What are the uh, options for some sort of a sentence or punishment or whatever? I mean- Yeah, I, I, think, I think the options would be, uh, you know, to, to write a ticket uh, and, and state on, on the ticket, you know, which would be in front of a judge upstairs in the-, in the and then what are the options that the judge has? Well, I don't think that the options that the judge has, I, he could recuse himself and ask for a different judge. The fact is that these these charges, plumbing code charges, actually different from most housing code charges are misdemeanors. They're not violations. So Mr. Beard could 
request an adjournment or or to get counsel. He can request a hearing. Is there anything that there would be, be a juried hearing? He would have to have... get into all that. What, well, what, that's what it is when I you know, have a misdemeanor. What I'm saying is, is that uh, it, it seems to me as though there ought to be some middle ground here whereby, I mean, people walk into court all day long every day and say, yeah, I'm guilty, but then they give you a diversion program or they give you a small fine or they give you probation or whatever. Yeah. What are the options? So the, op the options are the written notice. If there's a violation of the written notice, um, we could write a ticket and then that would go out of our hands and into the court's hands. Or we could say, I'm not interested in having a trial and the jurors and the misdemeanor and all that, but I am not interested in allowing this person to do plumbing in the city of Binghamton anymore. I think that we should suspend or revoke the license. Okay. My understanding is that would be handled here as the plumbing board would over overview, oversee the licensing program, who's eligible and who's not. And according to 31011, um, such license may be canceled by the examining board of plumbers. That's us for a violation of rules and regulations for plumbing and drainage in the city of Binghamton. After a hearing before such examining board of plumbers and upon prior notice of not less than 10 days. So if we do the notice now, the next violation could result in a ticket that goes upstairs to the fifth floor for a misdemeanor charge, or it could result in a hearing right here by the Board of Plumbing Examiners as to whether or not the license should be canceled or suspended. Is that the only option? Those are two Suspension options. and or revocation? There's nothing uh, lesser, lesser offense, if you will? Maybe a misdemeanor upstairs wouldn't affect the license at all. I don't know. The thing I have a problem with is that you, you're, we, we fast forward. We're in city court. The judge has got the paperwork in front of him. He, the judge has a full option. He could give him an ACD. He can give him a, you know, probation say, you know, the, there's just all kinds of options that the judge would have. And what I'm saying is why don't we have those options right here? And can we have them? Well, that's, that's whether or not we want to, A, just revoke or suspend the license or do we not want it that's up to us if we don't want to touch the license at all and we just want to bring up the charges then it's, it is out of our hands that is up to somebody else to decide on an acd or a dismissal or a small fine that's that's somebody else's bag but for us it'll be well, those those two things what's the previous precedent for a situation like this we i don't know of one in in the plumbing since I've been here, no. but right. in the electrical, I've been here either, so I don't but know. in the electrical, we uh, suspended a license for a year for somebody who's in violation of a similar offense. Awful. For first, for first yeah, right. For first offense, uh, it was not the first offense. First offense was a written notice. The second offense ended up in suspension for one calendar year. So why don't we uh, do a written notice and okay. give them a chance? That's kind of the way I look at it. Yeah. That's where we are. Uh, that's where we're at. Okay. That's where we're at. So John's making a motion for an NOV. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. First, I go second. Okay. All right. Uh, so Pat will produce a written notice of violation for. The plumbing company who worked on two occasions without a license and for Mr. Beard, be getting that in the mail, let it be known that uh, I can stop doing anything wrong again. It's good by life. Well, so for at least a year. It, it's fair enough. Okay. I appreciate it. All right. All right. I, mean, I, I, I did the wrong. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate your honesty. Uh, in any case, that's that's been discussed. We're not going to discuss any more yeah, matters pertaining more. to your I mean, case. No. You <laughs> don't feel obligated. To stay. You're more than welcome to stay. It's a public meeting, but don't feel obligated. We're not going to take any action against you in your absence. So if you're if you got stuff to do, we're all set. Uh, actually, you guys okay. Hand back to where it's supposed to be. All right. Good Thank luck. Guys. Have a good day. Thank Peace. you. <clears throat> all right. Next order of business. Uh, we have license applications. We have two license applications. 
Uh, first one, let's do that one first. That should be easier. That's the, well, let's do the old one first, Pat. Todd Town. It's a little bit of a fascinating application. Go through the mechanics of it right there. Thank you. Who is the folks behind us? Uh, this is Mr. Fangio. He's the next application. First, we're going to review. Everybody got one? We got Todd Town. Sorry, there you go. No, Robert. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, got, I, got, I got both. Okay. Robert Pizzurro. This is a licensed plumber in Connecticut. Test. He already has his Johnson City license. Mm, that's Mr. Fancher. We're looking at just Mr. Robert. Oh, sorry. At zero sorry, sorry. first. Yeah. And if you look at your uh, requirements for master plumber, it basically says that you have to be, uh, you have to take that test, the G24, right? And... You have to have one year experience as a journeyman plumber. So when I look at Bizarro's qualifications, he's got journeyman licenses in here that are more than one year old. Connecticut must be like Massachusetts because you have to have a journeyman's license to perform. Anybody performing at a job, you have to have a license. Yeah. So they must be like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or it was available, not mandatory, but optional, and you got it. Right. Seems like he checks all the marks, no? Yeah, I thought so, too. Yep. So we take the vote on Master A license for Robert at zero. I make a motion to approve. Second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It's zero. First. One second. All in favor. It says it's only an hour away. Yeah. Okay. Then the next license application that we have was for Kyle Fancher. Mr. Fancher is with us today. If you have any questions about his application, he made himself available to answer those questions. Yes, Johnson City license, it looks like. That it was a little backwards. And here's the interesting thing about that. The, like, Johnson City doesn't have a board of examining plumbers. Johnson City in 2019 came to Binghamton and said, we don't have a board of examining plumbers. We don't have a test. How about this? We'll base our licensing on your approval. At the time... Yeah, back in the day they used to, though. Back in... Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, in 2019 time. and to date... The way that Johnson City granted licenses was they said if Binghamton is satisfied with that individual's experience, Binghamton will let them take the test. And if they take and pass the test, it's good enough for us. What they've done now, since that agreement expired, we had a reciprocating agreement with them. They kind of kept themselves to those same guidelines without realizing that we we switched the test and the require and the required experience around. It used to be you showed me that you were experienced, then you get to take the test. 
Now, what we do with this new testing program is it says, you take the test and then we'll see if you have enough experience. Johnson City doesn't know that. So they granted a license based on an, a passing score on the exam. They did not verify experience at all. So I, th so I think with this application, although Johnson City gave them a license, I, I wouldn't, I would take it with a grain of salt and I would just stick with what our requirements are. Our requirements are if you can take and pass the test, we will review your, your experience qualifications to determine whether or not you, you've satisfied uh, what I handed out earlier was, was the licensing requirements. Yeah, yeah. so Kyle uh, wants, to, wants to chime in a little bit. Kyle, can you come over here so we can at least uh, get you on the, on the microphone? Uh, yeah. So when I went to the Johnson City Department to do the licensing, uh, basically I gave them everything that I had given them, and they, they basically said everything was good. And yeah. They granted the license. So everything that I gave you, I gave them. Yeah. Oh, I'm not. I'm not doubting that. I don't. I don't think that Johnson City, you know, got any more or less information than we do. I think what I'm pointing out is we had a reciprocal a ag agreement with uh, Johnson City that was null and void within a couple months of signing it, never got re, uh, re-signed by uh, Demi and Mayor David. So we don't really have a reciprocal agreement right now, but I, I'm just saying why, why you know, Johnson City is issuing licenses now, like it's news to me. In the past, they didn't. They basically said, go get your Binghamton license and that'll qualify you to work in, in Johnson City. Now they're issuing licenses. So things have evolved. We don't know exactly when or, or this, you know. This license was the seventh uh, year, seventh, oh, 24. Yeah, okay. this year. Yeah, they just gave it to him. So I, I have a call in to, to, to Mr. Uh, to Keegan, Keegan Coughlin, Coughlin Gerhardt. That's Johnson City's attorney. The clerk said you got to talk to him. Hmm? I, I don't know that individual is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's, I guess, the, you know, outside uh resource legal advisor for JC. He, he hasn't called me back, so I don't know where they are. So I guess what, what I'm saying is when we evaluate the, the, the application, Kyle, it's based on whatever yeah, criteria we have in Binghamton. The, the Johnson City license is great, but it's not. Yep, so just another piece uh, of Yeah, just, yeah. Me personally, I don't see anything here why this man would not be qualified to take the plumbing test. He did take the test. Okay. And he passed the test. Okay. So where we are now, when we look at this, it says, Give us an application, take your test, and show us the experience. So we got the application, we got the test. What we're looking at here is these letters that are in here that says, is there a sufficient amount of experience? Now, keep in mind at the bottom of this uh, paragraph one on the requirements for master plumber licenses, it says, um, if you have a degree in mechanical or sanitary engineering from a New York State college, then you only need three years of experience in the plumbing trade. If you didn't have a two-year degree from Del High, like Mr. Fancher does, then you would have needed five years of experience. So what we're looking at here is, um, can we see three years of experience working with or under? Now, well, it says under the supervision of a, of a master employing plumber. Um, Unique situation here is that Mr. Fancher is the employer. So while he's working with a master and employing plumber and maybe under the supervision of one, it's worded on our requirement page that you're working for a master plumber. And in this case, the master plumber is working for him. But you you decide if that's just a matter of semantics and, and the experience was still had either way, or if that really sours the whole thing for you and Turns it on its head. That's what's for me. Does it for me? Acceptable to me too. Okay. Well, anybody want to make a motion to approve Mr. Fancher's application for a Master A plumber's license? So moved. We have to say we make a motion then some seconds. Oh, I thought you made a motion. I'll make a motion that it Red. application be approved. Red is first. Anybody second that? I'll second. Yep. Michael second. All in favor? Yep. Unanimously approved. Congratulations, Kyle. Got a license. Thank you. Um, the last order of business, which isn't really uh, a positive one, but it's one that I noticed in, in the board notes and code and everything, is that we have 
we're supposed to have five appointed members of the plumbing board, each who has a vote. Your appointment letter was expired. I got a new one for you, so you're back in. Your appointment letter's good. Your appointment letter's good. Um, Art's appointment letter had also expired, but Art was saying that he's probably not going to be coming to the meetings much longer. Okay. Um, I think Art's going to give us his resignation, uh, which kind of fixes the, the fact that we had six voters here and we're only supposed to have five. So with Art, not, not, you're more than welcome to attend as much as you want, but he won't be voting any. Um, that's going to put us back to where exactly we're supposed to be. Three appointed board members, two are obligated to do it just because their position and the five of us will, will vote on everything so that we have an odd. Is there going to be a movement to get somebody to replace him? No, we are actually running on too many people at this time. <laughs> No wonder we got, but we have, you know, we were supposed to have one, <laughs> one master plumber, one journeyman plumber, and the rest were just supposed to be constituents or employees of the city. So we're all set. We're all set. Now. Okay. But it, but it, but it's with a little bit of, you know, sadness that Art, who's been with us for what, 30 years, more, more than that, yeah. more than that <laughs> has decided that he's sick of hanging out with us once a month and why don't we bring alcohol to the meeting? That's that might be I an inducement. <laughs> I don't know if that would liven it up or dull it. No, down. no, it would. No, it would liven no, it up. Liven it up at first, or or get some women on the board. <laughs> okay, <laughs> make sure you get that in the right. minutes. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Brad, I think we're going to be upstairs next next month. All right, yeah, guys. The last, comment. the last, the last thing that I want you to 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 make a note of before we close the meeting is that if if you look at um the requirements for the master plumber's license and you look at the plumbing code, there's some things in there that were so a little bit hazy. Kind of. So when, so when H H and K told us to fill our duties as members of the board and as the plumbing inspector, I flagged a few things here that I was like, well, I don't know if that's been done in 40 years. Is that, that still our duty? Well, some of the stuff in the plumbing code is, is outdated and, and it's, incumbent on us to revise this code from time to time to make it more appropriate with the date that we're in right now okay so uh you know one big thing that stood out to me was 310-9 where it says we're supposed to give every licensed plumber a sign or a plate which they will affix to the side of their building kind of like a auto repair station as that big new york state yep. all right we haven't done that in like 50 years just, just consider this as we move forward, guys. We may need to revise the code a little bit, which means we'll word it up here. I'll write it up and send it to Corporation Council and get City Council to vote on it. But I, I would, I would say it's in our best interest to take a look at the code because if somebody accuses us of not fulfilling our duties and responsibilities, I don't want them to be able to throw in this notion that we're supposed to be issuing, right, New York State registered plumber plates that. I haven't seen one of those. We got one laying around. Looks like it was from the sixties. Does your dad have one? Mike? He does. Right. Yeah. You, you but I, I have a paper copy. Yeah. Um, you know, other, other things in here is they talk a lot about being a, a journeyman plumber, having a journeyman plumber in your employee, uh, having experience as a journeyman plumber, big problem. New York state doesn't require, uh, uh, doesn't run the licensing program like 43 other states do. New York State lets the municipalities run it. We don't have a journeyman plumbing license. So right. it's very hard to know if you're employing a journeyman plumber or not. It's very difficult to prove or disprove. Well, it might be something card. you do, I have a but not many people do. Right. There I, are a lot I of have people a with a certificate as well, with, but not many people do unless they yeah. go up a certain way. Right. Unless you went up through the union or, or yeah. some kind of apprenticeship program. Exactly. Right. That's how right. Yeah, some of the bigger yeah. companies have it accredited. It's really right. hard. It's really yeah. hard to verify without a licensing your, program. Your dad used to do that, but yeah. they had apprentices and oh yeah. Had your so just look, it's just language. Another one is, you know, we say that if you're gonna if you're gonna get a uh, permit on behalf of the corporation, you have to be 51% owner. But it says domestic corporation. It doesn't say, you know. 
business, company, partnership. I mean, now the many people are directly got rid of that, right? The electricians got rid of having to have 51% at all. I'm saying even if we keep, keep the 51% and maybe we should clarify and say, not just domestic corporations who want licenses, but companies, businesses, partnerships, LLCs. Like, Anything associated with it. Yeah. And so uh, doesn't that hurt us more than help us though, as far as getting into the the weeds with things? Look at the reason that the that the electricians decided to get rid of that piece of uh, code was because we had a couple big companies come into town and one of them was, you know, very reputable and very good. However, it was bought out by a much larger conglomerate. This is where I'm going with it. Multiple electrical right. companies. And when we said, does this person with a license actually own 51%? They said, we have 16 million shares. Right. Nobody owns 51%. And if they did, they'd be on Wall Street, not out here, yeah. you know, pulling wires through the wall. Right. right. Okay. Is that the case with plumbing? It's something to think about. Are we so are I plumbing it, conglomerates? I, I so think big? that is something to think about and, and come to some decision on whether we want to encourage that or discourage it or change it. Right. There may come the day where we say that's not applicable. That was great in the 1970s when every plumbing company was a mom and pop business. Right. But now that we're looking at you know, large holding groups that hold not just plumbing companies, but real estate, electrical companies, all kinds of, you know, different operations. Maybe maybe we don't really want to have that as a mandate. But that's, you know, that's changing with the time. So in closing, I'll just say, please take a look at uh, the plumbing code. If there's language in there that doesn't make any sense to you or it's outdated, like having a sign or a plate. If there's things like domestic corporation that don't include all the different types of businesses that we have, or if you're saying, why do we even have this 51% thing in place anymore? Bring it to the to the next meeting or one of the future meetings. And we are, you know, it's our responsibility to keep this current and make sure that yeah, we're I running think, on something that makes sense in 2024 I, I and not think, just left over in the 40s. It's a practical matter that uh, we are vulnerable to some sort of litigation where right. somebody comes in and says, what are you doing here? And and where's the fairness in, in the proposition that's before us? Mm -hmm. And I know the last time we invoked uh, help from the uh, Corporation Council, they blew us off. But well, they said it's up to us. And they said, if you want to make changes, we will review your recommendations, but we're not going to guide you because you're supposed to be an autonomous group. So if we're in 2024 and we're looking at codes that are left over from the 40s and we don't want to be well, responsible for enforcing those, let's mix them. I and, agree. Yeah. Yeah. But all, all I'm saying is, you know, we don't have the capability to reinvent the wheel and, and come up with an appropriate definition. Other uh, municipalities have probably dealt with it. But I don't see why the Corporation Council doesn't have an obligation. What are we supposed to do? Go out and hire they, a lawyer? Fred, they have an obligation to review or revise our writings. They don't have an okay. obligation All to right. write it for us. All right. I see that. Okay. Do we have a, a model or a standard that's of another municipality that's close to proximity to Binghamton? Where I think this was all adopted directly from like a state website. That, that talked about you know plumbing you laws. Know, I'm sure there's core items in every single yeah. code, right? Of any yeah. municipality. But guys, I'm not asking you to rewrite this whole thing. I think we'd get ourselves in the hot water with that. But I would say that you know if you go through there and you say, well, this thing about you know signs and plates is outdated. Let's let's get rid of that. And domestic corporation only covers one really rare entity. It doesn't cover the majority of them. Or if you look at it and you're like, I don't even know why we do this 51 percent thing. We can get rid of it. I mean, the 51. We we even wrote into the electrical code that you don't have to own 51% of the business, but a business would have to employ a master electrician. And that business will have to have a place of business in Binghamton. And, and you know, maybe that, should, that, maybe, that master will yeah, have that, to that makes sense. Maybe we should just adopt that and be done with it. We could. Well, yeah, so bring your, bring your bring uh, your your recommendations to the next meeting. We can copy from the electrical board. We don't need to, you know, rewrite it. Okay. But the question is, do you even want to make people be 51% owners or is that an outdated rule that we don't need? Yeah, it? That. I'm a 51% deal. I, I don't know. I see it both ways. Yeah. I, I just... What if, uh, let's say, uh, the business was inherited 
right? And now, I mean, it was under um, uh, a uh, unexpected death. And now let's say the wife wants to take over. She can't keep the business running and the employees going because she's, she's, not, not, a she's licensed not a licensed plumber, plumber, but she has people underneath her that are licensed right. master plumbers. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's a little unfair, person. Like I said, a lot of this stuff was written in different times. So mm -hmm. um, I know it's homework and it's a it, it's a pain and I'm not expecting you to all have it done by oh, July, whatever we're coming back. But look, by, by you know, over the summer, yeah, we should be we, looking we, at we these every now that. and then. Oh, we definitely should do something. When you can't sleep, read this. That'll make you sleep real fast. Yeah. And uh, if you come up with some <laughs> ideas, bring them to the table. Let me just make one point. There better not be a test. Oh. I been foreclosed from taking any tests. If, if there's, you know, if there's a test, that. Fred, I, I will make a little <laughs> test one for you. Among other well, things, how'd you get to where you are today? <laughs> you must have took some tests. All right. And nobody has. Does anybody have anything else they want to bring up, discuss, debate, art? Well, I guess I would ask: Do I have to do anything legally? You can write it down somewhere that you know you you uh, are resigning from the the plumbing board, and. Um, that. And physically yeah. submit it. Yeah. Next meeting. Well, next no, you can give it to us today, you know. Yeah. You're welcome to come to all the meetings. Pardon? You're welcome to come to all the meetings. Okay. We just won't make you do all that work or, you know, make you vote yeah, on stuff. So. Just remember. This, nope. month, this month, we're going to make you type it all up. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah. You're going to go out with a bang. All right. Well, if that's... No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, right. I works in the... That's, okay. That's the end. I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. That's it. Second, all in favor? Adjourned? Adjourned. 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 Thank you. Thank you.